Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In my last video, I installed the Big Tree Tech E3 RRF to the Sovel SV01 and used sensorless homing to maximize the print volume. This board also came with a Wi Fi module, but even though the ESP8266 module can't compare with Octopi, the simple features are quite handy. The user guide that came with Big Tree Tech doesn't have much detailed information on how to set it up, so I will guide you through it step by step. The ESP8266 is actually a processor that can work independently to control other devices. When we do Arduino projects, we will also use this low-priced ESP module to connect to our own Wi-Fi network, control lights, MOSFETs, sensors, motors, and cameras. To use it for the 3D printer's Wi-Fi controller, we want to load a simple web-based interface on this module so we can send G-code commands via the web browser. As the ESP8266 is connected to the motherboard through a serial port, it will send our G-code commands line by line to the motherboard and operate the printer. There are some limitations. The weakest point of this setup is uploading the files. It takes a really long time, so you actually have no idea if the program is dead or still uploading, but I will talk about this later. To let your mainboard communicate with the ESP Wi-Fi module, we need to set the serial port to connect them. Open the Marlin firmware folder for the printer. Inside configuration.h, we need to search for define serial port and set it to 3. Save this file and compile the firmware. Copy it to the SD card and let it upload to the printer. Double check your Z offset and sensorless homing sensitivity settings and make sure they remain the same. If not, you need to set them again. Next, we need to upload another firmware for the ESP Wi Fi module, as the Marlin firmware is just for the motherboard to control the 3D printer. The ESP module is an independent chip so we need another firmware to let it enable Wi-Fi and run a web interface for us to send G-code commands. There is a firmware made for the ESP module to control 3D printers. It's called the ESP3D. First, we need to go to the ESP3D GitHub and download the latest firmware. Then scroll down. We also need to download a web user interface. Click this link and download the code. Now we have two files, the ESP3D firmware and the web UI. Unzip these files. Open VS Code to compile the ESP3D firmware folder. We can simply compile it without changing any code. If you want to add your Wi-Fi information, Go to the ESP3D subfolder. Open the config.h file, search for default STA SSID, change ESP3D to your home Wi Fi SSID, and enter your password. That's all we need to change. We can compile the firmware, click on the alien head icon, select the chip we're using, which is ESP8266, and click build. After a while, the terminal will show a success message. Go to our ESP3D folder .pio ENVS ESP8266 and copy the firmware.bin to the root of your SD card. We need to change the file name to ESP3D.bin. Make sure to use uppercase for ESP3D. This is very important because if we don't change the file name to be exactly like this, the bootloader of the motherboard will not upload this file to the ESP module. 
If you just copy firmware.bin to the SD card and turn on the printer, the bootloader will upload this file to the motherboard instead of the ESP8266 module, which will make your printer unusable. Now, put the SD card in and turn on the printer. It will take a little bit longer as the file size is larger than the motherboard firmware. After a while, you will see an IP address on your screen. When the Wi-Fi module starts the first time, it will create a new SSID. By default, the name is ESP3D. We can connect to this SSID and set it up. It should automatically open the browser. If not, enter the IP address 192.168.0.1 manually. Next, we will install the web interface. This page shows an error message, as we haven't uploaded the web UI yet. Select Files, go to the ESP3D web UI folder, select the index.html.gc and click Upload. Now the interface installation is done. Click Go to ESP3D interface. We will enter some basic information. Select language, select what kind of firmware the printer is using, and you can leave the baud rate as 115,200. Set the name of this device. This name will show up on your Wi-Fi network just like a computer name. I will use ESP3D SV01. You can identify this name from your router to assign a fixed IP address to the printer if you want. Click Continue to the next page. We want to join our existing networks, so change Access Point Mode to Client Station. Network SSID and password are already entered when we compile the firmware. You can double check to make sure it's correct. Click Continue, then Close. Turn the printer off and on again, and it should connect to your Wi Fi network. In my case, my router assigned an IP address and showed it on the screen. After you connect your computer back to your home Wi-Fi, you can enter the printer's IP address in the browser. Now the web UI is ready. On the left, there's a panel with some arrows to control the movement of the printer. If you've used the printer face program before, you should be familiar with this panel. You can move the print head in all directions. Here is the distance, 1 mm, 10 mm, or 100 mm. We can home each axis or home all. On the right, we can set the nozzle temperature. By default, it doesn't show the heated bed. Click on the menu at the top right corner. Select Preference. Check Enable Bed Control and save the settings. Now the bed is showing up. We can also check this box to check the temperature and report to the web UI every 3 seconds. We can control the extruder to load and unload filament, as well as change the flow rate and the feed rate. Scroll down a bit and you can see we have a terminal here that lets us enter G-code directly to the printer. You need to enter it in all uppercase. If I enter G28, the printer will do homing. If I enter G29, it will do auto bed leveling. If I enter M503, it will show the current settings of everything. You can basically change everything that you can do on the LCD screen. For example, if I want to set the Z offset, I can use the M851 command. The current setting is X-35, Y-3, and Z-0.8. If I want to change Z to negative 0.75, I can just type M851 Z negative 0.75. Use M500 to store the settings. When you type M503 to load the current settings, the number will be updated. When you go to the LCD screen, 
the Z offset will also be updated. You can also use M914 to set the sensorless homing sensitivity and change other settings. On the right, if you click refresh, you can see the files inside our SD card. You can select print or delete each G-code file. There is an upload icon, but do not use this feature. This is the largest limitation of the Wi-Fi module. Since it's using a serial port to communicate with the motherboard, if you want to upload a file, it will read it line by line and write to the SD card. For a one megabyte small file, it will still take a very long time and may even corrupt the SD card. It is also limited by the 8.3 file system. That means the file name can only be eight characters long and the extension can only be three characters. For example, if you have an existing G-code file, you need to rename it to a short file name .g. I will create a very simple G-code file. Draw a square and make the height one millimeter. This object is simple and small. Import this STL file into Cura and slice the file. As you can see, this file only contains about 800 lines of G-code and the size is 26K. Rename it to body1.g. Let's try to upload this file. Even a small file like this will take almost 30 seconds to upload and to reload the SD card. You can see the file is now showing up here. When you reload the SD card on the LCD screen, it's also showing up here. But for a normal 3D model sliced from the slicer, it will be much larger. So don't try to upload it using the Wi-Fi module since you might end up needing to restart the printer. If the SD card has been corrupted, you may also need to reformat it. It's okay to use the print or delete feature on the SD card. Besides that, another handy feature is that we can set up some macro next to the panel. For example, if I want to add a preheat PLA button, I can click here to use the macro editor and create a new button. Let's say the name of this button is PLA. Select an icon and a color and the target is ESP. We will put all macro files inside a folder. I will put all of them inside the M folder. For this preheat PLA macro, the file name would be m1.g. Then I will go back to the editor and create a simple G code file. M104S200 to heat up the nozzle to 200 degrees and M140S60 to heat the bed to 60 degrees. We can save this file as m1.g. Go to the ESP3D tab. Select this green file system icon and create a folder, which is M. Enter this folder and select files m1.g to upload. The button is now ready. When we click on it, it will send the command and heat the printer up. Okay, it's working. You can see the web UI and LCD screen are both updated. You can add more macro if you like, but the process is the same. Now you have a Wi-Fi enabled 3D printer. It's not perfect, but it's still nice to have this feature enabled as the motherboard already came with the Wi-Fi module. In the next video, I will show you how to connect the IDEX expansion board and use it to control the second Z axis so we can use the Marlin G34 Auto Z Align feature to align both Z stepper motors if they are out of sync. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. To the Sovel SV01 and used a sensorless homing and
and use sensorless homing. To connect to our own Wi-Fi network, control lights, MOSFETs, sensors. Homing to determine the print volume. Hmm. 